I've known quite a few good leaders, and with things that don't have to do with safety or legality and stuff like that, but things rarely have one method. That's too much of a black and white sort of thought pattern to think that this is the one way we're going to do things in all the times. And good leaders, people that I've even worked for, people that I've known, they rarely have to actually pull rank, especially if they have this sort of open-minded attitude. All right, so what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. So today we are here discussing the topic of questions being the answer. So it has been said um, in various circles by wise people that questions are the answer. <laughs> right, so answers aren't the answer, uh, questions are. So what does this kind of mean? This whole topic is in a case of, in, in service of curiosity. Does that make sense? So it's it's not questioning everything necessarily as being a, you know, one of those people like a, a delinquent type individual or somebody who's always got to, it's not like that kind of thing, if that makes sense. What we're talking about here is we're talking about curiosity, leading with curiosity. And questions being the answer is a very, this is a pretty detailed topic actually. It, it goes pretty deep. The first thing I wanna say about it is kind of what I've already mentioned and we're gonna, we'll, we'll start with that. So leading with the curiosity, you can react to things in your life in different ways. Even things that don't seem to matter too much and it also applies to the things that do matter a lot to you. But you can all, you can react to everything in a few different ways. And one of the best ways to do that is with curiosity. Instead of with pessimism, instead of with blind optimism, instead of with ambivalence or, or maybe even apathy or any of those things, you can react to a lot of things with curiosity. And I would, I would even go a little further and say the more things that you react to with curiosity, the more learned you'll become, the more open-minded you'll become. This whole channel is about open-mindedness and taking a holistic approach to things and asking questions is one of the best ways to do that. Because it, it opens you up to that curiosity. That curious mind, not doing it in a way like, oh, what do you know? Uh, why do I got to do this? Why do I got to do that? So there is some of that involved because unfortunately we are forced, especially when we are younger, forced to do a lot of things. And the answer is because I said so. Most, almost all people that give you that answer are not leaders. Now, they do have to say that sometimes but here's the thing about pooling rank oftentimes especially with open-minded circles and people who are really changing the world there are some things that need to that have been tried since i don't know thousands of years ago and they don't and you need to be serious about those things like safety you don't need to ask somebody why if you're out target shooting why you want to keep the safety on and you don't want to be like pointing your rifle around indiscriminately okay that that isn't something you need to question obviously we're not talking about those sorts of things or things that deal with safety and things that could kill you <laughs> so we're talking about here with the the sorts of things that you see through grade school like teachers or even your parents or tutors or any of those things oftentimes it's people older than you or in a higher station than you that say things like oh don't question me just do what i say and a lot of times that shuts curiosity down early and it makes people feel like they are doing a disservice to whatever they're involved in and it's disrespectful i mean obviously depending on your approach it can be but I've known quite a few good leaders and with things that don't have to do with safety or legality and stuff like that, but things rarely have one method. That's too much of a black and white sort of thought pattern to think that this is the one way we're going to do things in all the times. And good leaders, 
people that I've even worked for, people that I've known, they rarely have to actually pull rank, especially if they have this sort of open-minded attitude. That's what makes them the good leaders, to be honest. Very rarely does a good leader have to pull rank, because a good leader will inspire somebody by the attitude they have towards what's uh, towards whatever it is that they are managing, whatever projects they're doing, what, you know what I'm talking about already. So we got that out of the way and where this kind of belief came from. So we're not talking about being an asshole with your questions and being like a know-it-all. This is genuine curiosity. And if you're listening to something like this, you're probably somebody who is either a leader themselves or you're getting there. And everybody is always getting there, even if you're a leader or CEO of a company. Those people are curious. Those people read a bunch of books like I got behind me. That's like, that's like in a year they'll have that many, maybe double that or, or whatever the case is. And you know why they read? It's curiosity. It's thinking that, hey, there are more questions out there. Let's continue learning, learning for a lifetime. We don't just go to school for four years and then think we know everything because everything is constantly changing. There are some fields you go into, they're obsolete or no, the information you learned is probably obsolete in just a few more years. So learning for a lifetime, that is what makes this species so dominant and so important. Other species can do really cool things. Ours is our adaptability and our creativity and our ability to assimilate knowledge. And our ability to also kind of uh, simulate, not assimilate, but in this case, simulate the future. Think about, okay, what do you think is going to happen? And then we're pull together a bunch of data that we got from asking the right questions. The data is the answers. The data is or are the answers, whichever one of those is grammatically correct. Yes, but the questions get you there. I think I've said this on another one. The questions is like a treasure map. The answers are like your buried treasure or something, but you need that map. Otherwise, there's a lot of land on this globe and you're just going to start digging anywhere. You're going to die of old age before you even find anything. But you can narrow the search area with the map. You narrow the search area for where you want to go with questions. So questions are the answer, that attitude of curiosity. This whole video is in defense of that curiosity. You know, if you, if you spend any time around children, especially younger ones that are just understanding, just now being able to talk and form correct sentences and thoughts, what do they say all the time? Why? Why is this that way? Why is that that way? Why is, why is that a dog and this a cat and not the other way around? Why is, you know, they do that constantly. And it is, for the most part, from a genuinely curious, wide-eyed view of the world, and they're excited. Unfortunately, that is shut down a lot by parents who are I don't know. And and to their credit, they might be really busy. Of course they are. They're parents and, and those things. But the last thing you want to do is shut down a child's curiosity. You don't want... What do you? What kind of child do you want? You want someone to just sit in their room all day and not care about anything and not want to learn and not want to thrive? That is probably the opposite of what you want. So obviously, now, I'm not an expert on raising children. They're, they're all different. Obviously, there is some that gets to a point to where sometimes they give you attitude or they're trying to, they're walking that line and getting a little, okay, you're questioning something that right now is not appropriate. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the keeping that, curi that curious mind healthy and thriving and wanting to expand. But you can have that now. It like honestly, if you were watching something like this, you have it, whether you're aware of it or not, and you're going further. If you're you guys all out there should be reading books. You should be reading one or two a month. If you haven't started doing that, start start. If it's too hard, read just one page a day. Anybody nobody is too busy to read one page of a book a day. It'll literally take you two minutes. And step by step, you will get ahead. You'll start doing a little bit more and a little bit more. 
one book a month is not that much and that'll put you ahead of 90 maybe 95 percent of people out there just by doing that you're ahead of 90 95 percent of people out there in curiosity in looking for new avenues of inspiration you will be more interesting you will be a more interesting person that is like the most valuable thing to a lot of uh, high level leaders is that you're interesting and that you're eclectic like that that you have the ability to be taught that you you want to be taught and everything that goes along with that you want to be crafted to be mentored to be molded and the best leaders out there want people like that that matters more to them in a lot of cases than your credentials like degrees you have or how much experience you have and what of course those things matter but for a lot especially innovative companies ones that want to like push the envelope that are on the cutting edge of things they want those people who are eclectic and they're interesting and they are curious too they're like wow i wonder what it is remember when you were a kid you would wonder what it would be like to i don't know like you did, did you ever hear from your parents that man if you went up if you went to the empire state building and dropped a penny off the side it would put a hole in the ground because of the impact or or something like that and then you, that was exciting you were like dude i want to actually see someone do that i mean I don't want anyone to get hurt but just think about it the scientist inside of you wants to run that kind of experiment like i'm wondering uh what would happen if you dropped like a brick then if a penny would do this what would happen if you dropped like a, I don't know, a bowling ball <laughs> would it blow the city up once it hit the ground right but that kind of thinking it might seem out there but that's that curiosity and that is why this right here is in defense of questions in defense of a curious mind questions are the answer let me show you these books i got behind a lot of them are about questions in fact that top one here you may or may not be able to read it in the video but it's it's called leading with questions this is about and they talk about a lot of high level ceos people like that business owners entrepreneurs investors that they're all very curious people and the people they manage and the people that they look for with partners and stuff what this guy says in this book is that they're they're looking for people with that open and curious mind who approach situations with questions the the, the issue is when you approach situations with answers you're like okay we're gonna make this happen just go do it and you don't ever ask the people you're working with or the people that are under you if you're managing their opinions and stuff first of all that shuts you off to so much gold they're, they're, they're a gold mine of what's going on i will tell you right now too they most of the time they know more than you about what they're doing than you do they're doing it every day yeah you might have done it every day before you got to the level you are but think about it this way if you're not still doing it every day you atrophy just a little bit plus nothing stays the same new things have been implemented there are new and smoother ways of doing it if you don't think that is true then this is not a topic for you you are not humble enough to think uh, if you think that you know everything just because you went through some stuff and that's because you're the boss the best bosses will admit up front of course i don't know everything i need you guys to be my feelers out there to be feeling around for more opportunity and bring things to my attention and this leading with questions what this is talking about is that's how they lead they're like how can we make this more productive how can we make the workplace better what is it from me that is in my power to do that i can give you to help you with those things do you see what i'm saying what sort of processes should we implement also running experiments i should probably put a whole this is a whole nother video but we're going to just i'll just say like running experiments is curiosity just that it just is why else why the hell else would you run an experiment if you weren't interested in what's gonna happen right can you imagine having to run a bunch of experiments and you don't even care about the outcome maybe in school you had to right they're like oh yeah dis dissect this lizard or whatever and for some of y'all you hated that you're like we don't care or here we're gonna give you a complex 
algebraic expression and we need you to solve it and you're like I, I don't want to do 50 of those dude I don't that's not helpful to me for some people that's how it is that turns creativity and that curiosity off that curiosity and the questions so do it with things you're curious about for sure what else do we got here man so this book here think like a freak this thing is kind of it's getting kind of high man it's uh it's teetering there a little i have to start need a different background here but that's okay i'm gonna uh record another video on fixing things as you go along you know you want to just get started for for one this is probably not the way this channel is going to look forever but when i started it i was like it, it just get started you can change everything and you will anyways even if it's perfect when you start you change things around later on as new techniques come it's just like i was saying when if you're a manager when you were doing the things that the people you're managing were doing it probably isn't 100 percent the same if it is there's very few very few jobs that are exactly the same and if it is that's a boring kind of job to be in you're in a job that hasn't changed in 50 years I, I wouldn't want to like some people that is for them and that's okay then you need to expand your creativity and your curiosity and your questioning outside of that and things that you care about anyways as I was saying though we're gonna do another video on um, on uh, the topic that I just mentioned before I just went off there it kind of slipped my mind it'll come back though so anyways think like a freak is this third one. Oh, it was getting started get started First, most important thing, if you wait for things to be perfect, it will never be, you'll never get started. Anyway, here, Think Like a Freak, this is a book in the series called Freakonomics. It's written by Stephen Dubner and Stephen Levitt, is that right? Yeah. They also have a whole podcast, like, here on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube or wherever, um, and, and probably wherever podcasts can be found. And it's a it's a fascinating podcast. But anyways, this whole thing, Freakonomics, they're the people who write these books are they're economists and they run experiments and they're curious. They find out the secret causes behind everything. The secrets that one of them is called that. I don't think it's this one. I think it's their first book, Freakonomics. It's like it's subtitled like the hidden side of everything or something these are curious people the things they come they tell you in these books about this the true reasons why some things happen will blow your mind you're like huh i never thought of it that way that is very interesting they're curious so there's a book kind of about questions what else do we got here think again adam grant think again is about having the curiosity of okay we implemented this kind of thing now let's try this one have those questions i wonder what it would be like if we tried this instead if we went with that supplier if we hired this person if maybe we're looking at this all wrong maybe we need to pull a bunch of people that's the great thing about having a team of people is because they'll give you different opinions and even if you don't outright agree there's usually something that you agree with you're like huh again i never thought of it that way so that is what Think Again is about. It's about a lot of, of those sorts of things. Or taking or taking techniques and the way things are done and applying them to other state parts of your life or other businesses, cross-pollinating with ideas. Very interesting. What else do we got here, man? We have... There's a book here on the bottom. You can't really see it. It's called Ask and You Will Succeed. This is a, it's a book, literally, it's kind of just a list in different parts of your life about questions that you can ask yourself, good, deep, powerful questions that you can ask yourself and kind of meditate on and figure stuff out. If you're not good at coming up with questions yourself, this, I think it's a thousand and one questions that this book has, and that, that'll help you. And then, like I, like I said before, you can start to cross-pollinate. We also have this, The Art of Insubordination, that's right above it. That book is about be an insubordinate but in a healthy way questioning leaders questioning the rules questioning not just those things but questioning regulation be like okay why actually is it this way half the time it's gonna stay the same way and you're like no that that's probably the way it should be but the other half of the time you might up in uh, efficiency you might make some more money dude that's a uh, 
that's an encouraging thought. So this is why questions are the answer. In a manner of speaking, all of these books are about questions, because all of these people that I read, and almost every book I read, it it references other people who have read books or who have done experiments on things. So the authors were curious enough to say, I don't know, I don't have all the answers. Let's go see what other people are doing and we'll tie it in to what our, the subject of our book is. That's kind of what this whole channel is, actually. Most of this stuff, I would say, uh, most of this stuff isn't my own personal opinions. I mean, there's some of that, of course. But most of it is, like, I, I get it from these other people, these really, really intelligent people. And I come up with 10, 20% of my own stuff. But that's what they do. That's what they do. They spend so much time asking other people's opinions. And if they can't get them in an actual room, they read their books. They watch their podcasts autobiographies, biographies, just whatever it is out there, right? So anyways, y'all, think about it. In your life, what sorts of, what sorts of things do you think could benefit from having a more curious and open mind? This should excite you. And if it doesn't, try it for a little while. Try it for a little while. You can try little experiments that don't even cost any money or don't take any of your time. Like try brushing your teeth with your other hand. Or if you've got hair, I've got long hair. So like when I have to brush it, it takes a while. It's a bitch, okay? For those of you out there, or you men, most of you ladies know this, that have never had long hair, it's it's a pain in the ass to, uh, I mean, it, it's great. It's fun to have and stuff, but it's a lot of work. So if you brush your hair with the same hand every day, brush it with the other one. You know, experiment. Have that curious, open mind. All right? So, thank you all so much for being here for this one. Leave a comment below if uh, you got anything to say about this topic, whatever happens in your own life. Any questions that you have that you want crafted more. I like to think of myself as a crafter of fine questions. Right? Uh, you can be, too no doubt about it. So anyways, thank y'all so much for being here and have a beautiful day.